Today we're taking a look at a skin diver from Ball Watches. This is the Engineer M Skin Diver 3. However, in my opinion, this is no skin diver. It's a serious dive watch with serious specs. It gets 300 meters of water resistance, a sapphire bezel, tritium tubes, and it's made like a tank. It feels like a weapon in your hands. It's heavy and really well made. So let's flip the camera and take a look at a skin diver from Ball Watches, the Engineer M Skin Diver 3. So it's been a little while since I featured a ball here on my channel. However, whenever I feature one here, I am always impressed with the fit, finish, and quality and just the overall heft of the watch. This is a Ball Engineer Skin Diver. It's a skin diver, even though it gets 300 meters of water resistance and really is a true dive watch. However, they call it a skin diver. This was actually lent into the channel by exquisitetimepieces.com. They have a brick and mortar store down in Naples, Florida. They lent me this watch in and it's currently on sale on their website for a very good price. We'll talk about price in a little bit. However, if you like this watch, it's a really good opportunity. Definitely check out their website. I will put a link down in the description Tell them watch Chris sent you. So getting on with the review of this watch. As I mentioned, they call this a skin diver. This is the skin diver three. However, I would not call this a skin diver. This is a serious dive watch with 300 meters of water resistance, a sapphire bezel insert, which gets micro gas tubes or the tritium tubes that are actually in that bezel. You have a black dial with applied indices. Those get gas tubes as well. So does the hands. The hands on here sort of look like rocket hands. That minute hand has a little red tip to it. Then you have a date at the three o'clock that has a cyclops on the sapphire crystal itself. So a lot going on on this watch. Down here, right above the six o'clock, that six is applied. That 12 is also applied. You have three little tubes by each one of those numbers. Right above that six o'clock, it says chronometer because this is a COSC certified automatic. This gets the in-house movement with 80 hours of power reserve. And they actually remind you of that on the dial. So right below, it says 300 meters. And then right below that, it says 80 hours. So this does have 80 hours of power reserve, which is pretty impressive. This is their in-house movement. Uh, it is not based on an Eta movement. Uh, you don't get to see the movement from the back because this does get a solid case back. This is a large watch. Although on their website, they say it's around 41 millimeters. It wears like a 43 millimeter watch. When you see this watch, it looks large. Its presence is large. It sort of reminds me of a 50 fathoms, especially because of that bezel, that domed sapphire bezel is really chunky. At the case itself, it measures at 40.5 millimeters. However, at the bezel itself, it measures in at 43.4 millimeters. So this is a larger watch and with good reason. It has 300 meters of water resistance and you have a very large bezel on here for someone to actually operate this with gloves on. When you flip over the watch on the case back, it shows a sort of engraving of a diver with some serious equipment on it. That's why I say that this is really not a skin diver and I don't think they think it's a skin diver either. You have screws that hold in the actual bracelet. So this is a very serious watch and this gets a very serious spring bar, actually lack of spring bars here. You're getting screws, which are you know much stronger. You have a very large crown, which is grippy. I'm going to do measurements on that very quickly. 6.8 millimeters thickness on here again 300 meters just over 14 millimeters thick which is pretty good considering that it does get 300 meters you have male end links on this watch so i'm just going to show you the regular lug to lug if you were wearing this on a strap it's 51.5 so not that small and then on the uh, bracelet itself 56.6 so uh, there you go. You need a screwdriver to unscrew the uh, screw that holds in the bracelet to the case. You also need one for the bracelet because this does get screwed links. Uh, polishing on the sides, you have a chamfered edge, polishing down the middle, very hefty, very heavy bracelet on this watch. It's an H-link bracelet and has a 
Very nice low profile, double deployant. And you can see some half links right there uh, with screws. So really nice, very robust watch, really over-engineered. That's what Ball sort of do with their watches. This is a very over-engineered watch. Um, and when you have it in your hand, that becomes evident immediately. It's really heavy uh, and it just feels like a serious watch in your hands. Very quickly, I'm gonna throw it on my wrist. Then we will talk about price and we will of course do a loom shot uh, where I'll show you the tritium tubes. So today I have on my Cartier, this is the Cartier Santos ADLC, sort of a very contrasting, very different watch from the watch that we are looking at today. Uh, sort of an integrated bracelet watch that I absolutely love. Well, there you go. Here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. This is a 43 millimeter and change watch. It wears like that. It's also 14 plus millimeters thick. And you can see it does wear a little bit high on the wrist. It has a lot of wrist presence. It's very heavy. It's really nicely made. I think it's a very good looking watch as well. Sort of reminds me of a 50 Fathoms a lot, especially because of that bezel. So quickly, price on this, this is $2,800. They actually have a blue dial version that's $2,700 on their website right now. Really great price for this watch. If you are interested regularly, it's around, I believe, $3,600 or $3,700. So right now you can get almost $1,000 off this watch. If you are interested, they have it right now on exquisitetimepieces.com. So definitely check out their website. I will add a link down in the description below. Well, there you go. Tritium tubes, not the brightest, especially if you're comparing to Superluminova. But you can see here, there are tritium tubes in the bezel, on those indices, and then of course on those hands. The hands are a little bit of a different color. You don't have it on the running seconds hand. I think that's a miss. They should have put a little tritium tube on that second hand, or if they couldn't do that, at least put a little bit of Superluminova. That's really it, not too bright. However, it does last exactly the way that you look at it right now. It will be the same in you know, three, five, 10 hours. It doesn't really change. Um, over 25 years, it will fade. However, you could replace the tubes. So throughout this video, I've mentioned it a few times. I really think this is a really well-made watch. And for the price, I think there's not a lot of watches out there where you're going to get the build quality that you are getting from this watch. You're also getting an in-house movement with 80 hours of power reserve. That sapphire bezel, it feels like a tank in your hands. So there's a lot that goes into this watch. And I think the $2,800 price point for this currently from uh, exquisitetimepieces.com is excellent. But tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Ball make great watches. I really don't like how they sell their watches initially, and they have some sort of pre-order process that I've never really understood. However, if you're buying it from someplace like Exquisite Timepieces, it makes more sense because you just buy the watch and get the watch rather than having to wait or pay half now and half later. I really never get that. But all in all, really great watch, really great specs and it's very good looking as well. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It's super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in the next video.